message is a decolonizer. A uh, school makulu about the way we are taught, who teaches us, what are we taught. What does this education mean to the majority of black people in this country? Meaning, who does it serve? It's the type of education that prepares us for the workplace. So it's an education that continues our legacies of slavery. It is rotten. It's not an education that really we should be getting in the first place. Never and never again shall it be. <laughs> Free. Mr. Tisa Decolonizer, a school makulu about the way we are taught, who teaches us, what are we taught? The kind of education that we're being fed in this country is the type of education that prepares us for the, work for the workplace. So it's an education that continues our legacies of slavery. So it, it's a problematic education in general. While there are good aspects to it, perhaps, uh, fundamentally on the, on the core, it is rotten. It's not an education that really we should be getting in the first place. Well, there's two challenges with the apartheid system. It was a very segregated uh, education system, which divided people not only according to race, but also according to, to class. People in the upper class live in suburbs with good schools, good infrastructure, and those who were poor uh, and from working class uh, families were relegated to townships. So the landscape in Dogan's apartheid uh, education was divided according to the Group Areas Act. The idea of to decolonize education was to ask ourselves, Ma, what, what does this education mean to the majority of black people in this country? Meaning, who does it serve? The other idea was, was, was around the idea of curriculum, knowledge. How you control society is also how you, who controls the, the ideas of society. Even how we learn history, you learn African pre-colonial history so long ago that by the time you're learning all about Europe's history, you've forgotten that history in Africa didn't start with colonialism. The problem is that we academic tole on Lebes Kanyilanga, Abanga Matota, it's like a boys, white boys club, who are completely uh, dis uh, uh, distanced from the reality of the majority. So you arriving as a black child to a university where you've be, you, you, be, you believe that there is no history to this place outside of colonialism. So when you get to Reyes, you get to feel like it's paradise because where you come from, it's horrible. It's a squatter camp, it's a concentration camp, basically. So you spend your five years, your six years feeling like, yeah, you're grateful to the system because the system is providing you with better things. There was what we call the Tertiary Education uh, Act, which also divided education. Uh, black students would go to uh, the Bantu stand uh, universities or exclusive the universities that were exclusively designed for blacks, and which provided an inferior uh, form of education. And then the rich and the, and the, and the famous who were predominantly white would go to white institutions. And so access, the only way in which the predominantly white institutions would maintain what they call quality was by excluding blacks and by also controlling the access of, of a number of black students who came into those in universities. In the spirit of us becoming a rainbow nation and all what we celebrated after 1994, the expectations was the universities will open access to all of us. But that has not been the case. 
today in 2018, 2017, we're calling for our land, we're fighting for free quality decolonized education, Marikana miners are being shut down, and this is what you get when you don't have an education system that is tailor-made and specific to the conditions of the people of the day, which is black people in this country. When you read about the, um, the birth of the Christmas fall, and about what can be complete miscommunion of Christmas fall, but it's not a Christmas fall. If you are looking at it from uh, the ideological perspective in Arabanayo, as well as we are saying that uh, everything that represents uh, colonialism and that reminds us of colonialism in this country must fall. Roads must fall, like color. It, it, it color as a, it's got a spontaneous moment. It doesn't get a lie. As a combo, you lean the lay on a banana, you know. 2015, yeah, I think about much earlier about much. It can't be a banana. It's too many, 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 it's we were stuck on the meaning. But we were stuck on the meaning. And the city, you can't understand the actions of the man if you understand the Imbalian list. And the Imbalian list is the Imbalian list. And as a result of that, uh, after the Kulegile, the and the Saicho after the Kulegile official in 1994, meaning after we became citizens of South Africa in 1994, nothing was done to undo Lord uh, On top of Mr. Chileo Mishaba, on top of the money wealth, they are still celebrated even in the history of this country and as a heritage of this country. About the curriculum, about the conditions that people face in, acad in academic spaces, especially for I am Lukuza, about to abafiga yo abamnyam. Kaleng mbi izo, and sa feeling ataba funda abamnyama abana space, so so loti ba na ba te te ngake zabo. Eni ndo biso tu sa ngo uba mshope walenda ho. Kote is based by university as in Africa. Um, and of course, Glondo a huge debate about um, what does the university mean, what does the university stands for, but also the routine. So we want to symbols of Andabam Shope, who have been able to conquer and dispossessed Abandabam Yama, but still, the university is paramilers as South Africa, by a celebrate. So, the picket line. And as a result of that, mobilized from different groups. Like we had the ANC, we had PASMA, we had the Black Feminist, we had non-partisan people. but who were interested to claim the because it spoke about in the Labafilanga University as a white university. In that case, we go into to colonize uh, education, to colonize the university, became a, an important uh, topic because of how the university represents itself. Hey, Orlando, I'm back. Let's go. We call it Christmas fall. Let's Christmas fall. Let's see the movement. Let's see the Puma Blondo. Buzz is saying the land. I'm going to turn it into. Ibisele inge koka ni biseli kelo. Ba fusele la nengi ko encha. Yoku ba sisi buzi mi buzo, fusi buzi mi buzo enzi. Ma yobana kasi la pango kusi pismenda u. And I think that is a very important contribution because you know not only are they interrogating you know you know the present, they are also interrogating the past. In the beginning of 2016, there was a housing crisis in the University of Cape Town. And as a result of Lowy, Tina Sumaba from the Bamyama, who Samona Banyama from the Bangananda, who shall Sabe Kyo job at a university. The thing about Leg Leong about that moment is that 
Yavula is in the opportunities to talk about is in the guy, not only up at a university, but in South Africa or Pell. BMs that free. BMs that free. Understanding and coming from a black conscious um, background myself, I mean, I mean, too much before, just before Fismas 4, I was very much engaged in like just reading and understanding our predicament as a collective of black people. And I think Hane Fismas 4 is present. It was just a natural response for me to be a part of it. And I got involved because I felt it affected me. Not, not only me personally, but it affected a lot of other people that were around me. And, um, and that is, this is like a generational thing. And if we don't fight now, obviously our kids will have to fight for the same thing, or like our kids will have to fight at some point, you know? So someone has to do the fighting. If it must fall officially, in that time I'm already pregnant. I think I was seven. Seven, yeah, I was seven months in Alondlel. Being there at that time, to me, it didn't occur with Mshambe. I'm just risking Mshambe. Mshambe, anything might happen to my baby right now. I'm pregnant. If you think Lokuz and Mangmacha La Payana, Skijima, Lokuz, then can it sizzle and go some and then Funubalo get left foot in Alondlel. Upin a foot to your gear and gene, a fun about a pin a foot bowing Alondlel. So for me, I don't know, it, it, it was, <laughs> I think it was a suicidal mission of saying that, I don't know, should you die, then you'll die for this. If it must fall, it was not just a, a protest. It, 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 it was a protest that uh, shook the country into its knees. Now, that is clearly disturbing capital, clearly disturbing status quo, to a point where the ANC diagnosed the problem as uh, what you call regime change. Now, if you have the, the ruling party saying this is not a genuine protest, this is regime change, clearly you could see that this is not just any protest. This protest speaks to the structural setup of a society and is a of the resistance. There, were, like, there was a problematic narrative that the media actually put out there in terms of FISMA's fall. You know, obviously, some of the things that we did or some of the things that we were engaged in, they would p paint us as, you know, um, hooligans, for instance, and that we are doing um, certain things when essentially we were responding to how the state was responding to our protest. There's a very big difference between violence and militants. And in the BC and the Kofi's must fall as we're being militant. And by militant is to respond to an action or to respond to a provocation. And at Tinangokwe, to the way we saw it and the way by the state and the country was treating us, they were treating us in Ati were hooligans, were villains. You know, were there to disrupt the, the order and the system of the day. So for to disrupt capital. And we, we, we didn't essentially, from the beginning, want to disrupt capital. We wanted to be able to access capital in order to get free education. Classifica a picket line in and we're there, we're peaceful, we are not armed, and we're, we're just saying all we have is a song and a manifesto. Sinengo Makas, Agwazu Nkulela, Nuzo Gwazu Baba Setang Adoni, Sine Manifesto, which list is a list of our demands. Apart from that, we're non-violent. So when you then start responding to us, Nisi Tubula, Nina Nislata Langestan, Grenades, Nendondoni, what is expected of us to do is to defend ourselves. And that is where the militancy in FISMAS 4 comes in, in defense and not in provocation and not essentially in, you know, provoking the state either. We were just responding. School manje, kuna ma students right now, hama ma court cases. Kuna ma abanta ma na records right now. Students who were at the forefront of um, of FISMAS 4 were you know, victimized in so many ways and also like you know they got excluded you know like they got suspended and expelled and, and all sorts of things. 
Then if the students don't accept this, we'll start our own movement. <laughs> students must <laughs> fall. <laughs> students must <laughs> fall. <laughs> it is very difficult because also for students as well to, to witness that Right, how little student they open up, but while on Hobamo for Franti, Baba victimizer in the way that we were victimized. You sort of like just want to take a back seat and be like, I, I don't think I want to be involved in that thing. I was arrested four times in my in, in that in that year. First time the Puma get Pili in Wimpeck. And the second time the Hippos. You can imagine you are you are here because you are arrested for Fismas Fall. And now to ban a band to move to high school, to ban a band to pop out high school. In it reaffirmed our position that in front of Yamahala and in front of the colonization is a necessity, so that a band to ban Yama, a band to ban a band, a band to ban Fana, a band to Tuala, it is a lot of Africa as the case. It was important for us to go through all of the sacrifices. Precisely because if, if as a generation we don't stand up on, on these issues, we will have a situation come 20 or 10 years, 30 years to come, where our people will ask us, in your time, in your age, what was your hist historical mandate? And we will not be able to explain to anyone what did we do. Today, Sindala Sinde conscious because we know we have been able to upagama Sinde Genya or Smakla Elon Klebez Kanye Langba. Eli Lizwe, Eli Lizwe Lito. And Joba Eli Lizwe Lito, as we willing to go and say no meaning to sacrifice even our own degrees, our own careers and our own lives to put a point across that education is not a privilege, neither it is a a passage for the select few who are wealthy and who are white in this country. On the 23 October 2015, it was the day that we had the union building. Since uh, Russia had down the campus, uh, a province from now, Shangoni, Afghanistan, South Africa. So uh, our aim was that day was to occupy union buildings until uh, our demands were met. So what I will say really happened that day is that Rosenbeza, uh, the power of mass mobilization. You know, kind of let's see, I understand about South Africa, eh? Uh, is that any idea that seems to challenge a setup of Elizwe is going to be met with resistance in any way? I mean, we are American. Abasebenzi were debating 12.5. They are not even asking to be in control of the means of production, which we, we, we are advocating that workers must be in charge of the means of, they are just demanding a 12.5, you know, but still they are gunned down. Uh, they've been trying to align with their own reasoning. Uh, when people are oppressed in Alenjela, uh, the only way they can disorganize the system is to dismantle the powers by being violent and all of these things again. Got a mess to take a off and on road in the sixties, in the seventies, in the nineties. Till right now, we're trapped in the 2015, 16, 17, and 18. So even though in those as we should have back then, zero relevant. But we also found ourselves in a very uh, critical time in the nineties, where we should also use a much of justice as now, right now, with the situation, with situation yet. Freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. In the West Fana Nabo UCT, uh, they're still carrying the culture of whiteness and they make sure that their culture remains as so. 
um, once you find these scholars that are raising questions around, you know, but we can't continue with this thing. And then, you know, it, it becomes quite a, a very sensitive thing, how raises us into, because that kind of thinking will change the status quo of South Africa, will change, you know, the knowledge trajectory. When we talk about new knowledge producers, not only South Africa, but Africa Education Aid was designed for that. That is a substandard inferior education. And the idea was to keep us as a permanent underclass. When people bring decolonization as a, as a reaction to a problem, like now we've had fees must fall, we must decolonize. Do I really stand up for what I think or believe? Do I really say, let's do this with the curriculum <laughs> when someone is saying this is the way we've done it and this is what matters? Um, and I think that in the last few years we've seen that the courage is there, but I think for a long time, it's, and I think ongoing, it, it's a, it's, these are institutions that um, that, that think of Africans as people who do not know things. There's, a, there's something about the assumption of, of who, what a person who knows things looks like that really um, shapes the experience of the university. One of the, the criticisms that was leveled uh, to Follis by uh, Professor Kwesipra was how Abandu that Batetanget decolonization but abateti ndonge language because any as Kobe's Kulu as often as a Laban to Bakut, a pair Africa, Zilu is a macolonial. So, how city at the colonizer Utetu Tini, Tang as Utetanga's languages and, and what you know they do for a band. Uh, what does it mean to decolonize the curriculum? What is the role of e language when you are decolonizing e curriculum? What the Africaners did, you know, during apartheid was to, to take from the state and, and build their own language to the level where it is today. They allocated state resources. Till now we have not done that. We have not taken from the state and invest in our own languages. Students or the youth at South Africa is trying to say, let's do away with uh, Western systems. Let's do away with the Eurocentric ways that education is being conducted in schools in Alendel. English in is because of the tribes that come with a very Eurocentric, a very British-centered education system that were fed. I mean, the fact that we maintained and we kept the Eurocentric and European kind of university style of education and curriculum is very problematic, especially because we're trying to move into what we consider to be democracy today. We're trying to move into or transition into a more free, more equal society. Abantu who were in the driving seat uh, are no longer in the driving seat, but they get in our own faces. But the car still remains the same, you know. The engine, the root of the car is still remaining the same. Nothing has really changed. There are a lot of Africans in universities, but the way that these universities have been structured for so long um, is that, um, you know, you, you come in front of a classroom. I remember when the first year of, when I was teaching, a lot of colleagues would come and be like, try to give me hints, and you know, someone was, was who has a PhD from Cambridge having to show the first year student because they don't believe this black person knows <laughs> and can teach them English, right? Um, so there's, so you carry a body that is questioned, your authority is questioned all the time, and then you, the idea that you could know something is always under pressure. But it's also, I mean, I, I noticed right away when I first started teaching, but even before I would be like, how come we have classes full of black undergraduate students, African undergraduate students, and postgrad gone, it's all white. Why are we always importing ideas? Why are we not as scholars sitting down and debunking plans on how to actually make things better? 
for EU youth and Amshanje and youth as I right now. Because if it's in the Shalas, so go Shalagunje till 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 Nalendel. People have always been complaining about the colonialism. We're not the first, very first generation to be complaining about Ilokuza, the structures that are hostile to us. I'm just lucky also where I'm located in African literature. I don't have to explain why we are always in black worlds. I imagine it must, it must be harder for someone in sociology, but I'm like, but you're in South Africa. Why is your sociology thinking it's in Europe? The department has this organization that they work with, which is part of the department, and it's, it's called HRDC, the Human Resource uh, and De uh, Development uh, Council. It is chaired by the president of the country now, uh, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, and the minister is deputy chair. The issue of language has been part of the discussions there and it looks like government is, is moving in the direction where uh, African languages are going to be compulsory in, 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 in most of our institutions. If we were teaching um, in a such a way that we couldn't simply take for granted, um, that Europe is the center and that some of us are becoming developed, what would it mean for the very mediocre people who are surviving <laughs> really well, you know, in the world because they are psychologically bold, because the world tells them that they are the best? What would it suddenly mean for them to realize their mediocrity? I am not really comfortable to say I want to hear a lot of black writers and black voices, black literature, but for what purpose? Because, for instance, if me and I am teaching in the university and I'm teaching, uh, I'm a philosopher, I'm teaching about Plato and whatnot, those people, the kind of education have now laid the foundation for Western civilization. So then we have to ask ourselves a question, with the kind of education that we talk about as a decolonized education, is it one that is going to force a change in society? Is it one that's going to force or bring about a new kind of civilization in our lifetime? Abafundi be fees must fall. Kabe city maku kukuwe inle la yoku fundi sa kukuwe izindo ez fundi so I abandon in best call. Um, it's primarily because it has gotten to a point that it has become very clear that what we are seeing is a continuation of the apartheid project. Very little in terms of reversing and trying to find good in this current you know chancha in South Africa. What is it that is important for students? Sikalel Baba Fundi be Taba graduated university, Baba and Abafunda Banjan, Benzin Doni, Ges Tobo Sabo Semfundo, Benzin Doni, Ges Gil Zabaz Fundile for South Africa. Now, what does it mean for black students to be told that the passing rate is 30% while they don't know 70% of the work? And the government is fine with that approach. And, and, and it's a shame to find the Guti graduates, Umbia Puma Nestanga Saka, Puma Net Diploma, Ambo Salako Abo because there is no employment, because the education system is designed to make you a beggar. I am equipping enough for you, you know, as a person to come and say, okay, Dinale degree, this is what I can do with my degree. And now these are very serious concerns that are in line with this idea of, you know, decolonized education aid. Ukwenze Lindobana, it reflect the identity as Africa, it reflect the ideas as Africa. Decolonized education is education that will allow us to change our political situation first and foremost. And as what kind of manifestations have been there within our so-called movements, which is what is the end game at the end of the day. If we were actually having a conversation that was in, um, invested in, in really thinking about knowledge and power, um, we would ask different questions about why when we have xenophobic attacks it's black people being attacked and not white foreigners. <laughs> you know, we would ask those kinds of questions. Part of decolonizing is to actually uh, uh, realize that moment that we want to change, not uh, artificial change of face, we want to change the entire setup and design of the country. But we are starting this conversation through education because Education is not just an, an act of learning, particularly to black people uh, in this country. There's a long history of education, and that history is a relationship between 
being made to be a sub-serving being, or also being made to be an always an obedient being. We have a knowledge system that's very beautiful. Um, you know, and, and you, until we are at university, you will never know what uh, Africa were once, you know, um, dominant in terms of science. And you, you know, you find what South Africa, then you've got Mapungube. Mapungube predates, you know, what happened, the discovery of diamonds uh, in Kimbal. And these things are not taught to, 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 to Abafundi. Uh, it's only when you reach a university and you do your own research, you know. And, and those things makes us in artists in Abandu Tina, Ababu Tata, Gaugane, Aba Abangana Quas, Indobana Bazen, Ulabuas, Balbek, but okay, Tinas in Africa, Siaquas, Gwenzapa, or Kuksuapi or Chopana Park. If we are going to look at ourselves and locate ourselves within the 16th century, where there is the rise of white supremacy and so forth, and then we talk about that kind of education, for me, I think it is problematic. But if we look at the history as a whole and take into account that we were there historically, we were the ones who built institutions before the West built institutions. They learned from us. So it's not a matter of that it's inferior. We must ask the question, what has happened in the gap of history? What happened? Who's the Ganja and the Tina? Suddenly we are the ones who are being taught when we are the ones who used to teach. Freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. Ah, Risha Manga are folism or a folist. Ah, if you are looking at it narrowly, Ongari de Batubane, Boba Ba key and part components the the student movement the trauma on our must fall in Cape Town then fish must fall in uh, October and then it continues in 2016 and 2017 so Narena Lidi the Cardinal Pillar State Three um, which is a black black consciousness obviously inspired by Steve Biko and uh, uh, obviously inspiring us uh, in, 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 in Pan-Africanism, and then Black Radical Feminism as well. Back to the decolonization, they peg it back to, you know, what was the struggle of this country about? And they draw similarities, you know, sometimes you go to, you know, Marikana and Shaville, you know, to June 16, and all of these things must start and they incorporate to the language about Tetanga, about Tetanga decolonization, about Tetanga struggles, as I said, schooling. You know, what are catching Post 1994, we've seen very little that has changed. Today we are speaking about uh, decolonized education. What are your takes on that? We are getting an education system that is all about transforming a rat into becoming a cat in a world of cats killing rats. Whereby uh, that rat loses its it instincts of actually fighting a cat because it sees itself as a, 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 a cat. So the, the problem is about this colonial education is all about uh, actually selling us a, a, a development that is actually foreign to us. About African uh, philosophy needs African mythology. We need something that is actually natural to us. We need to actually develop, de develop natural. Right now, the structure and the content of the education, the way in corner, it's not structured in a way you would, you would go back into your own community and solve the problems in your community. It's a commodity that will help you get, accommodate other commodities, right? It's not something that will help you would bring value to your community. When you are anchored in the community, your struggle gains um, relevance and your struggle gains a lot of currency. History has already given us this example whereby when you're taking on power, when you're taking on um, a regime that oppresses you, it's important that black people, black young people rise up because that's, that's, the, that's the age group that forms the discourse. That's the age group that determines which direction the country should go. Education starting from your mother, from your father, from your parents. Education you're getting already has killed your self-belief. Mm -hmm. You don't understand your genius, you don't understand your own self. Mm -hmm. So is there any decolonial education in a colonized state? And should we hide that in many ways, as I say, we want decolonial education, we're also saying we're still a concrete people.
Decolonization is the an an complete annihilation of everything which is not a representation of who we are as a people. So the moment we annihilate everything which does not rep represent us as a people, that is when we begin to decolonize. We have our brothers and sisters who are very educated and every Saturday, Svabonawa Sevilla has a street drinking, driving the Vrupas that make loud noise, you understand? But they can't come together and say, hey, let's start a black firm, you know? Come, we don't have a retail. Let's start our own retail. Let's solve the, pro the problems in our communities. So the form and the content of the education we are getting right now is not communities into it different. So in my mind, how I envision uh, decolonized education is that you can't adopt a system that was not built for you. The one who owns the land will obviously dictate what is being taught in that land and how that land is run. So because of the land is still not in our hands, we can't have decolonial uh, education in that sense. I remember I was at home and he announces free education. It's like in free education will start off in 2018. A lot, of, a lot of the people that I was with at the time were also very excited, um, you know, to find out exactly how is this free education going to be rolled out, what is it going to look like, who is it going to serve, and so forth. And when we started asking those questions, Kobuzi Sori, hey free education, we wanted to know the nitty gritties. When we didn't get the responses, that's when we knew or the NGA announcement day of free education is essentially supposed to stop us from further protesting or causing anarchy because the state was aware of the fact that at 2018, no one is opening anything, no one is going to register, and we are essentially going to shut down all institutions, if not the country itself as well, through shutting down the richest square mile, which is Santon, right, which generates over a billion rand a day. Uh, what do you think about Christmas fall as a way to decolonize education? Uh, with the fallist movement, right, it wasn't just about fees, but about uh, the decolonial uh, project as well. While we were on the streets, we were looking at bringing down the current episteme right now, right, the current uh, knowledge system. So we want to bring about a change in the knowledge system as well, while also bringing the fees uh, down. You know, we must never make the mistake of separating the two because I think when we do that, um, we reverse the gains that were made because it is a big deal that Cecil John Rose um, was challenged. You know, it is a big deal for um, the mind of the black person to know that, look, you can actually challenge power in this way and you can actually, you know, find a way to redefine what, you know, the university is as a space. You know, and these universities are in Africa, but the content and everything that they teach, even the, the culture in the, in the university is not African. Yes, fees are free, quote unquote, but um, you cannot give me poison for free and expect me to celebrate. You know, it doesn't change anything. So for me, the two um, are linked and we must, I think we must bear that in mind when you think about what it is we want to do about education, knowledge and the university. What I do not understand is how our leadership, since they have been in the struggle, how come they have abandoned who they are? Unfortunately, these guys, they are not in power, they are in office. So it comes back to ideology and education again, because they are fighting within the system when money talks loud, when someone who's really in power pays you to lose your morals, to turn against your own people, you know. That is why when you look at Abotaki, the black middle class is one of the obstacles when it comes to blackness. When it comes to the power of defining ourselves, if you trace fallism, you'll see that there's a point at the University of Whites with Rents, there's a point where Fallists walked out with t-shirts written for white people. The following day, there was already a case mm. that was being lodged with the South African Human Rights Commission. So, as a people, how do we then make sure that in this protest, we come against Gira? Because I think one thing for sure as black people that we know, Gore, Gira. If we are not separated and we are one, I think 
conquering is possible. So we need to find ways in which we bring everyone from the kids to Rona teenagers, to Rona, our grandparents who under one banner so we can speak the same language and fight for the same cause. Oh, okay, uh, is it possible for us to unite under a capitalist society to organize ourselves? With the concept of Ubuntu and capitalist, those things won't even link. They won't even come together because with the capitalist system, it's all about a survival of the fittest. It's Charles Darwin. They want racism, science and racism to the fullest best. They want. Hence, it's born and that our economy is not going to be able to because our relation is not actually on. We're not united. Freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. Twenty-four years of saloutism. <laughs> <laughs> what it has brought is a lot of pain. Because mm. now it's not only whites against blacks, it's black against black. Twenty-four years later, we have been in a very big prank, you know. <laughs> but someone has been playing a very long joke on all of us. <laughs> If you look at you know what young people have done post-1994, is that they have critiqued the 1994 project. You know, most of them have poked holes to say, um, you are telling us that we are free yet, you are telling us that we are free yet, you know, asnam shaba. So a lot of people, a lot of black people know that, you know, 1994 was just a gimmick. We keep on fighting the same battles from Wherever go, Yan Fan Repeak, Tilngoku, or Rose must fall, office must fall. We have been fighting for easy indoor, especially for things Ekfanega see as it is ever like easy indoor as it is vital, as it is important, Gakul don't need to fight for them. Someone once said that education it's like water, basic, you can't live without it, like capitalist world. So it is. It doesn't make sense for us to fight for indoor that is life building. We had issues, you know, psychological issues. People had mental breakdowns during Fees Must Fall and after Fees Must Fall because of the response we were getting from the state. That is the sacrifice that I believe young people should be willing to make. If I must put my body on the line, which I have done and I will continue to do, in order to achieve a specific objective that will benefit all black people in this country, that, then that's what I'm going to do. It was a very hectic moment. I mean, um, again, giving thanks to black students. When I was arrested without their support, we would never been out up, up until today. Because everyone, immediately after we, we became, we were arrested, everyone came out. I do not think I have an option of op opting out from this struggle that we have been engaging in, you know. I don't think in an option I can't do this anymore, right? And of course there are days where I'm just like, like how long are we going to do this thing, you know? How long are we going to get our people to understand the problem as a country? Liberation, you know, I know it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of Zoluza, what we have. Maybe the prestige, maybe the honor, maybe the glory. But at the end of the day, if there is no sacrifice, then nothing will be achieved. There is sacrifice that has to be given. And we learn that all through history of our resistance and protest. Sacrifice, that is what we need. And our education aid must be able to tell us and then like it is none other than secular colonialism. On the Bez Kanyelanga, Abafika Ayo, 
but at Ulaba, but build a university is justifiable within the Batata Ulla. We used militants in order to show government how serious we were. And in 2017, at the end of the year, we got the pronouncement of free quality education. We still need to discuss the decolonial um, component of that education that was announced in 2017. We still need to discuss how it's going to be implemented and rolled out. But from our militancy alone, we were able to get a response and a positive response in that. Seeing black people in, a, in better positions, you know, um, being not only Econ economically free, but also um, psychologically free. Um, having an education that speaks to us as African people. Having black people that actually understand that we are Africans and um, that the borders are artificial borders that are made to divide us as a nation. And that we need to be cognizant of that fact and we should not play ourselves by always looking at one another as the enemy. The most exciting thing about Ufiz Must Fall is that we've got a potential middle class that is highly, highly politicized. Very clear about the dynamics of the country, very clear about the politics of the country, and it remains to be seen in future what kind of contributions as a middle class that this pool of students that were involved in Ufiz Must Fall will do and contribute you know, going forward. A, a rootless tree doesn't grow. So, we let's build a move. So, we will tell his story than our own story, since he should history. It's, it's been a very long 24 years of nothingness. For me, I lament the, the role of my intellectuals. If you read literature on the discourse of decolonization, the people who have let us down are intellectuals. What are intellectuals in South Africa doing? How are they helping us to deal with the challenges that um, the country is facing? One cannot deny that uh as, as Abandama Myama in, in, in South Africa, we have never been free. In fact, our unfreedom started uh, immediately when white people landed in our country. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of, okay, it's kind of um, tricky to answer this one. For me, it looks like it has to be an ongoing struggle and people aren't committed to ongoing struggle because they want to be happy. I'll borrow the words of Nina Simone and say, freedom is living without fear. Any kind of fear. I think what isn't a which the black consciousness movement articulated as a whole, not only Steve Biko alone, but as it progressed even after Biko's death, are things that we have not attained yet. And it is important for the youth who to see much towards those things that we require to get ourselves out of this mess. It shows that we're in a hype of being called born free, that now the doors of lending are open to everyone, but are they really open? 